All right, so that I can sync it up then. Hi, I'm Dusty and welcome back to my lab. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about printers and uh, just general projects I got working here. Um, so right now what we're going to do is we're going to pull this uh, piece that I just got printed off of my bed and we're going to check out whether or not it worked or not. Whether or not my dimensions were correct. I had to print this a few times so we're going to see what happened here. What did I do with my scraper? Hmm, not ready. Losing my tools. Here it is. We can edit that out. I've cut myself a number of times trying to do this, which is why I don't use a razor blade. Even just using the putty knife, I've hurt myself. There you go. Okay. So, this is PETG. And uh, as you can see, if, if you have your uh, bed leveled and adjusted properly, it really, really sticks. So uh, you don't have to deal with a lot of warping issues as long as you do your supports and don't like try to do too aggressive of an overhang, I find. Um, but uh, I'm really a fan of this, this filament and this plastic in general with, uh, with printing now. Um, you know, I started out with PLA on this Ender 6 uh, that Tim and I bought a little while ago. Um, actually, about a year now I've been, I've been fiddling around with this thing. Um, but uh, PETG has been the newest one that I've, I've started working with, and especially like the translucent colors. I mean, they print even better than like the opaque black that I've gotten. And uh, so it's, it's just cool for a lot of projects like that. I mean, I, I didn't, like this doesn't need to be aesthetically the way that it was. It's just kind of what I had loaded on the printer. But um, anyway, so the project that I'm working on, what this is for, is this actually. So I realized like I'm, I'm working on a lot of projects here and I want to share more of them, but it's kind of difficult, you know, to set up a camera on a stand and then like, you know, be working near it or around it or whatever so like what my plan is is I'm gonna kinda make a, uh, a stand for my camera that's gonna be shoulder mounted and uh, I, I mean I just you know change this and see if it uh, well alright they're kinda loose so we'll see if we can get it to work but so this is gonna be kinda the idea we'll see if we can get it to actually function the way I want now before we do that and what this is, is this is lock line so this stuff is super, super useful, and uh, not just for like a certain application like this. Like I've seen Lockline used to uh, what? This, this is Lockline. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but you, there's a number of reasons why you could be familiar with it because it's useful for a lot of different things. Um, not only is it useful for helping hands, with, which is what this is originally for. So like holding, they have little clamps and they hold things together for, for you to solder. So like two wires can be wrapped together or when the wire, when you need to solder the wire to a connector or something like that. Um, you know, you only have two hands and you need to hold the, wi the solder, you know, wire and the soldering iron. So like you, you basically need to have helping hands to help you hold stuff. <laughs> if you have a buddy, then you can, you know, they, they can fill that need, but if you don't, then, uh, then you need to use one of these. But, um, not only is it useful for that, but it also, it's, it's bendable and, and articulatable and throughout the whole thing, and it's extendable because it's all chain pieces, you can actually, um, direct water through it. So like they, they can, uh, direct, uh, jets for, uh, machining parts and like, so you can shoot lubricant and stuff as, as the machine is, is turning. Um, but anyway, in, in this, in this particular situation, uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use two of them to hold my phone. Like I said, so it's going to be a uh, little, oh yeah, I got to put this on first. So I bought this system, it's called the Quad Lock, and I actually, it's, just, it's not a sponsored video, but I, I do like this this mechanism, it, it's pretty pretty clever, works pretty well, and uh, this was originally for an armband, but uh, I'm trying to modify it for this here. So I made these little channels for these rubber bands, it's not like super necessary, but I just kind of put them in there anyway. So just like that and then this is gonna and these are loose so like I, I should have made that like essentially I'll show you how I made this but and I'll probably modify it actually um, I, I had to like basically make a sphere cut out inside of here and and like so basically I'll, I'll change the the diameter of that sphere like a half a millimeter or a millimeter and then they should snap in and have a ni like a nice amount of friction um, Something else I might be able to do if that if, if that fails, like I don't think that the, that's really how it works from what I could tell from looking at it. But if I, maybe if I put a couple little ridges inside of it, so then it like it snaps into the, the larger sphere, but then the the ridges like hold it and make contact for friction to hold it in place. So this quad lock system, 
it's pretty pretty cool. So you know, ring for your phone, but then also locks in. So well, I definitely like it to be a little bit more uh, stationary and, and tighter, but we'll we'll see if this will just generally work a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna start recording. And what this is, is this is like, this is stretchy paracord. And it's, I'm definitely not a tailor, but it seems like it actually might work. So the main usage of this is for recording things that I'm going to be working on over on my workbench with my hands. And, you know, just so that, again, like I said, so I'm not like working around a stand. Whatever. And you can see, this is clearly way too floppy. So I, I need like to actually get some friction in these, in these joints, like I was saying, because like if I, if I, if I tilt over it, you know, it's not coming off, but it's not actually holding in place, which I need. So... Anyway, we're going to try to actually do that now. <clears throat> and I'll show you like how many steps I went through to, to get to this point now. Let me grab a chair. Then this, this piece is, this came out pretty nice. Well, at least, uh, my dimensioning and like so that that's the tricky bit like the, the printer can do threads but you're limited you know somewhat by the dimension of the dimensions well the the tolerance of, of the nozzle so you can put different size nozzles in and then that'll change the amount of extrusion you know in the software and everything so you can get higher levels of fidelity and like and more expensive printers obviously are, are can get you know high resolution if you want really really high resolution models then you really need to go with a resin printer um, resin printers are I mean, amazing. I haven't really, I've never even really witnessed one in person. I've never, you know, interacted with one, but I've seen a lot of YouTube videos. And uh, so, like, if you're into model making and, like, painting models or, you know, like, board gaming and, and that kind of thing, um, I, I really want to get one. It's just, you know, there's, it's not better or worse. It's just a whole different thing. Um, but the thing is, is that rather than it, it printing filament, so a, a nozzle, you know, moving in layer space, you know, uh, and doing it one at, one at a time, um, instead what it is, is it, it, it actually prints it upside down. And how it works is that it, it sits in a, inside of a pool of resin, and then an ultraviolet light, similar to like at the dentist, you know, but in a certain pattern of, of the layer, it shines on onto and basically cures the resin in a specific, like into a layer. So it's not a nozzle moving, it's, it's, it's uh, a light, a light pattern that they, that they shine. So they, sh they shine a light pattern of the layer. And, uh, I mean, because of that, you don't have any pickups or, or put downs of the nozzle head. So, there, you know, there, there's no, there's very little cleaning up depending on what it is, but you can also do really intricate supports and stuff because you do need, still need supports. If you think about it, if you have a, a figure that, you know, if you were printing me upside down, my, if my arm was like down here, then, you know, this would be floating in space. So you would need a support, you know, coming down in order to hold it. But anyway, so like, so this piece here, I designed this, and uh, you can actually see something went wrong with the print at the end. And uh, so I, I was lucky that I made the threads uh, longer than they needed to be. But I, I found, you know, that, so if anyone's wondering, these standard lock lines are, um, let me see what it is, just so I don't mis misquote it here. It's ANSI Unified Screw Threads, and it's a half 32nd um, threads. So basically that, that means that it's, um, it's a half an inch in diameter and 30, 30 seconds uh, of an inch the thread distance is. So between each thread peak is 30, 30 seconds of an inch. No, just 30, not 30, 30 seconds. 30, 30 seconds of an inch. The, um, our imperial system is stupid. But um, anyway, so yeah, really simple piece. I mean, I, I totally, look at that eyeball job. That's horrible, right? At least it's still kind of like, I can articulate this into the right position. But um, threads in there really nice and strong. And, um, you know, clean. I think, I, I think the nozzle just clogged. I think that I had the bed too low, or well, too close to the nozzle. And I think I scraped up a, a piece of PEI into it and then it, it probably clogged like, you know, later on in the print. Um, 
But yeah, so there's that. But so we ran into a problem when we tried to do this. So what was the problem? The problem was that these holes were too big. Or the spheres. Where where the actual balls fall, fall into the joint. So you can see I made them right here. So this this fix is pretty simple. I mean I, all I really had to do <laughs> if it'll actually let me do it. Probably not. So this I don't know what it is with, with uh fusion and uh and spheres, but I don't use them a lot and when I have tried to use them for this particular project it hasn't been uh, very cooperative. But anyway, we can get around that. So we have these sketches available. So I had 12, 12 millimeter spheres. So what should we do? I mean, I, I think that in the one that, it was, that this one was functioning, it, which it was pretty tight, but that was probably just because of contraction, partially, because of how thin that, that wall layer was. And because that was as loose as it was, you got to be careful with diameter because it almost compounds faster than you would intuitively think. Um, I think what we're going to try to do anyway, because they are thick and, and the, the PETG can stretch a little bit because it is pretty ductile, is we're going we're gonna to go for 11.25 diameter. Hmm, see? Okay, cool. I made a sphere, I didn't cut a sphere. Oopsie. Spheres. The earth is flat. This proves it. Okay. Now because that is pretty aggressive, and you can see that I, I kind of just eyeballed and cut down a certain amount. This might need to be cut down a little more. I'm going to go 10. Go a little bit deeper. And then we're also going to chamfer this 0.25. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm kind of just guessing. I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to reverse engineer this, this lock line. You know, I, I, I haven't really looked online if there, if there is, you know, a specific uh, diameter that, that you can just copy and people have figured it out already. But the other aspect of it is that they don't have my printer. They're not printing probably with PETG. So it's really just a lot of, you know, trial and error, denial and terror, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so just did that. And I guess we might as well just reprint this one because we're going to need it. Um, that being said, uh, we also have to print this corner piece, which that was a, we, we tried to film another video, but we, we were having trouble with the autofocus on the camera. But we can just pick up where we left off, and there's a couple things that, that, uh, that I want to uh, change on this specific file. And uh, what this is going to be is it's going to be basically a, a, a scaffold for, uh, for uh, an enclosure, a top enclosure for the, for the 3D printer. And... Uh, I'll explain a little bit why, why it's so, so advantageous to have one and, and you know why we're going to go through the work of doing it and why, why I've put this uh, beautiful specimen on top of this <laughs> beautiful beautiful uh, 3D printer. Um, but yeah, this, guy, this, uh, this circus tent it needs to go. Um, but let's, uh, since we still need to modify that file, and I'm pretty sure that this modification that I just did on this particular one is, is going to be what we need, I'm going to save that and just start this print. So I'm going to export it. Quad lock platform, platform. Let's see what I had it. I don't want this. B5. So you can see. I probably didn't print all them, but I, I probably exported a bunch of them. Okay. So now we got. We also have to clean up this uh, this bed before we can just print on top of it again. Nice. These are really unstable at that height, especially on the chair. Oh my God, wasn't uh, wasn't gonna give me trouble today. One quirk that I found 
um, especially with this with PEI, which I'll, I might talk a little bit more about later. Um, your adhesion has a lot to do with your bed leveling. Like if you if you get a good squish, especially with PETG on this PEI, it it will not come off. I mean, it's it's really really impressive. You can get away with having very little supports, and I mean. I've also done pretty significant overhangs too with this, and I mean bridges as well, and like, I don't know, I, I'm a big fan of this PETG stuff so far. It's pretty cheap, it's cheap, it's about the same price as PLA, um, and I have just gotten into printing nylon, and technically, I, I, from what I'm understanding, especially through the software, this printer isn't like properly specced for nylon, but I'm doing it fine. I think it has to do with the fact that nylon is pretty, uh, pretty ductile and springy, so like normally a Bowden style. It's a little bit harder to do that rather than a direct extrusion method where the motors that are actually feeding the the, uh, the filament into the hot end are right near the hot end. So like if you think about it, you have a, this huge distance where all that springiness of the filament can bind up basically. And uh, there's there's advantages and disadvantages to you know po both different styles. Um, but th this is this is all basically stock, um, effectively except for this uh, beautiful enclosure. But um, this printer has been amazing, and it, so it's done PLA, ABS, PETG, and uh, and nylon now at this point. Um, I probably would never be able to get any type of a like really really springy filament, um, like the silicone types and whatnot, because if, unless I unless I modified it to have a direct extrusion method. Um, but anyway, so we have this quad lock platform exported. fan running in the printer now. I don't know why it runs all the time. It probably shouldn't run all the time. I mean, the hot end isn't heating up, <laughs> but it has, to, it has to show you that it's on, I guess. Okay, so I rotated it in, into position. I mean, I'm not going to change anything because it, it seemed to come out pretty nice. SD card out. We'll set that to go. So in the previous video that we filmed, um, did a little bit of a rundown of, of the machine and everything, and, and uh, we were also talking about, as I started to allude to, the, the, the circus tent on top, and uh, the advantages and disadvantages of that. So the disadvantages, it's not as you know nice to look at. <laughs> the other thing is uh, it's less it's less easy to watch your print as it's as it's occurring um, because you can't look directly at where it is. Um, it's also harder to service because you got to pull this thing on and off. But the advantages are. are enormous because you, you you just especially in this basement living in the north where it, it, right now it's 17 degrees outside um any type of little draft especially on abs or different different uh, filaments like it uh ny nylon warps really badly even even with you know that this enclosure it doesn't seem to matter at all but uh abs especially is very very sensitive so you know by enclosing this i mean that the, the you can see the fidelity of the prints that i'm getting is is pretty good you know and any time that that it's not printing correctly it's generally my fault so this was PLA. This was uh, we, went, we went, kind of went through the processing, the process of uh, how to make this, and like what what my reasoning was, and, and what the point is. And what the point is is that we're gonna basically hook it into here. And I was you know figuring out the dimensions of these little teeth that hook in. And I have an idea of what what we want to do. We want to make a post that comes up, and then we can wrap it in in a nicer looking uh, sheath, and uh, have a better enclosure than this. And uh, you know I'll probably have to figure out a little door or something like that so that I can actually get to everything, but. 
Um, that might be something, you know, I'm realizing now, that might be a problem. I mean, like with this, I can just pull this up, you know, not that it's pretty or anything, but it is pretty simple in that regard, and I just took it up there. Um, what Tim was mentioning, and like what we might want to do, is rather than, and what I was imagining was print the entire post up. But that's kind of excessive. It might take a, it's going to take a long time. Um, what we maybe want to do is, uh, you know, maybe use something that we already have. So this this was a uh, container for my fish sticks, which, I mean, I probably shouldn't use this, but it is. I mean, it's something that I have, and it probably would work. So um, we are thinking about that. I also have this that I've been laying, that I've been keeping around, piece of junk out front of my house. Uh, so the only thing I'm worried about with this is it might be really heavy and clear and obviously cutting through this might be pretty taxing. So we're going to see what happens and we're going to uh, think about it a little bit. But before that, um, I think I'm going to give you a little better rundown of this, this file and this print and then we can talk about um, what we might want to do here. So let's go back over to here and what we want to change. So, I, I, the PETG, especially with this print, since we don't, there's like no overhangs or whatever, I'm going to pull this edge up so that we can actually, you know, demonstrate what I'm talking about. So you can see these teeth here are, are designed to go into this channel, and then, and you can see it, it does hold in pretty well, and I, I just kind of roughly copied it. I mean, on this side I stylized it. It's not like it's an airtight seal anyway. None of them are. You know, I mean, I, I <laughs> these weren't even, I realized, like, once I was building this, that these weren't even clipped in. They were just kind of, like, sitting there. And, like, so that that's kind of the conundrum now at this point. Here we have the original. Okay. And, am I holding it right the right way? <laughs> yeah, okay, like that. And so I only copied these, because th these are what fit into this channel and then up into here. But how it actually works, and I'm not even sure what this is. It's strong. I think I think it might be nylon, some type of nylon. Um, but it's injection molded. You know, this wasn't 3D printed. And these these are the little teeth that that grab in, and they really grab. But can I replicate that? I probably can. But how much work? How much effort do I want to go through? And is it going to be you know re as reliable? Um, I don't know. I mean, how often am I going to want to take them off? Probably not very. So. What I'm thinking I might want to do is I might want to drive a screw here. Either way, um, I think I want to do... Hmm, I don't know. What do you think, Tim? How about... Here, here, it on the flyer. How about this? We'll, we'll try the latch mechanism. We'll, we'll try to print it. I'm, I'll probably make it a little beefier because we're going to try to print it out of PETG. Because if you look at this, so this this is all negative space in here. So I'm, I'm concerned that it's not going to be strong enough, but if I if I do a little clever work around, maybe we can get it to be strong enough. Um, let's see what we can do. So, let's back up a little bit before I made this pretty. Is that it? <laughs> Didn't change much. Oh yeah, and, and what else could I do here? Because this, this was like a quick fix, but we want, which one is it? So one thing you can see in this file that's wrong is that uh, th these legs are way too big. So right at the end here, I, I cut them off, but that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it is just go back where I made it and then change it. Oh no, okay, so I can't do that. I was, so I, I consolidated and I made it all on one sketch, which generally, I mean, I am by no means an expert when it comes to uh, that aspect of, of th uh, 3D design, like what the what the orthodox way to get to the end point is or like you know I, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a place to say but like what I find is that you know consolidate as much as is reasonable onto one sketch as possible you know so like because then you can just continue you can do multiple extrusions on the same sketch as long as it isn't too convoluted and you can't and then you can't figure out like when you did what you know because a lot if it, if it starts getting way late in the timeline and then you're not sure it can be a, a nightmare to try to hunt and I'm terrible about it you know in the same way that you want to do uh that you want to do comments and whatnot for your programming, um, you would want to like basically name all of your different extrusions and whatnot so that you could you know easily reference them and get back to them. But I, uh, I'm, I'm still I'm still trying to rein, rein that in here. <clears throat> um, anyway, okay, so I'll, I'll leave that that extrusion till the end because what I did was I just extruded it all on one on the same sketch. I sketched here, and then I just extruded both of these up. 
and then I, I needed to cut that off, which I did at the end. So what we need to do is we need to make, these are irrelevant, that's not important. Um, these are though. So let's get the right angle here. And how significant is that? Not at all. So this just aesthetically, they, they put these in a little bit, which we can do. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, construct a plane. Let me say three millimeters. Okay, good. <laughs> Got to get this into an orientation that I can actually function with here. And think about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like this. So here we are. Now, ran us from the right. And then, what? What is the? What's the secret? This. This is the secret. This. This is how you can do everything. Seven. Seven millimeters. Okay. And that is from the corner. Right. Make sure I did it right. Well, you see, see, I was trying to use it this way, but the calipers don't really want to sit in there, so let's just see. It is seven. Six, six and a half, seven. You have these rusty old ones. I kind of prefer them though, because you know what happens with these ones? They go dead. <laughs> and then you just you're eyeballing it anyway, but it's got a clunky thing on it. So, all right. So we're seven from the corner. Hmm. Now this is okay. We grabbed it. And then how far up are we? It's three. Okay. See, that was cockeyed there. Don't want that. Okay. Now we're just gonna go over a little bit. That's like that's like a millimeter. Now this now this might be a little problematic when we try to print this thing actually if you, if we're starting to think about it because we wanted to we wanted to have this printed in the other in the other orientation but now we have these little these little guys to worry about so we're going to have to either figure out supports which or which is okay but or we're going to have to maybe print it in the the incorrect orientation to to kind of uh, because this still worked even though I printed it in the incorrect orientation there was a little bit of drooping when it because it was trying to basically print this against gravity but it still worked and then what's more more crucial with this is going to be these little barbs you know that they're the right shape so we might want to prioritize and print it this way or which way oh no, I, okay. Yeah, I'm getting confused. No, we're, so we're, we're in good shape. We can print it all the same way. Now, did I print, did I make the file the wrong way then? Let's see. Yeah. I did. Yeah, you can see. So, I, I was trying to draw this over here. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong. That's fine, though. So what we need to do is just to make the exact same move. Yeah, so I, I drew it the wrong way in the file and then I thought that we were gonna have a problem with printing it, but we're not because I was drawing it wrong. So, let's see. So the best way to figure out this barb is to do is to do this. So I, at least in my opinion. So we're going to make right angles, you know, at the at the right distance, and then so should we try to, you know, eyeball it or you know do some fancy calculation to figure out what this angle is? No. What we should do is we should just figure out how tall this is and then just connect them, right? So because that that's an easy measurement to take. 
four and a half or five. It doesn't matter really. So five. Let's see. That's probably two or. But this is where this is where we can actually change it up a little bit. Is that actually on the line? Yeah, it is. Okay, we were a little off kilter there. Um, we'll see if we're going to change this, but right now I'm just going to go with two. Draw it up to here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It looks like, if you really look, it looks like they actually rounded these. So this looks to me a little bit that like, wow, that looks not right. But why doesn't it look right? It doesn't look right because even though the measurements are correct, this, this edge is rounded. The edge of the barb is actually rounded here. So it has more meat on it than, than if we just did a straight shot. So how, what are we going to do there? We will roughly, well, okay, there's a couple different things we could do here actually. Now, I could try to fit a spline, so I could try to eyeball it, you know, or, or get really fancy and take a bunch of, you know, linear measurements from, from, this, from this theoretical point, but that's not the best way to do it. Or we can get, or we can use the, the software's tool, which I think is probably going to be the best thing to do. So, I could extrude this this way. Ooh, whoa. <laughs> Okay, there's a barb, you see? So that, that looks pretty close. But what we could also do is rather than that, we could just extrude the whole thing, this whole entire right angle, okay? And then we can chamfer it and get essentially the exact same effect. Um, I think this is probably better, you know, because anytime you, anytime you do a spline, um, there you go, that looks good. Um, anytime you do a spline, every single fit point of the spline is going to show up on your edge, and like, then it makes it harder to uh, to, to pretty it up at the end. When you, when you're trying to do a chamfer on a on a split on a on a spline edge, it's it's a nightmare. So then a lot of times you'll do a like I'll be like cleaning stuff up by doing a spline, and then I have to do another extrusion, and it's a nightmare. So okay, so that that looks pretty good. I, I'm pretty happy with how that looks, and I and I'm pretty sure it's it's generally the right dimension, except for. And actually, that would also affect the pointiness of this a little bit because just because of the way that I constructed it, I made this a little bit fatter. Okay, so like I made this this dimension two rather than what it, it looks more like one and a half. Okay, so and what that also did was it made this uh, this angle that it drew at a little bit more aggressive. Okay, because I moved it in further, and that's what made this this barb point like look especially pointy with especially with that aspect and the fact that it wasn't rounded. So a number of things going on at the same time. Now I want to, like I said, I don't know what this is. It's probably some kind of nylon, and it's like it's 100% infill. It's because it's an injection molded. Um, so like I, I might need to add a little bit of beef onto this. Now I don't know if I want to add beef just directly like I did there, or if I want to do like a, you know, if I want to do a diagonal um, where it's only really stronger at the base. If you look at it, if I'm looking at it really really closely. You can actually see that that's oops sorry that, that's actually basically what they did. So there there is actually a little like almost looks like a little weld bead chamfer you know all all here and here which I would do anyway because because it just adds to strength and it's not actually affecting how it sits into this channel at all. Something I'm just realizing now, we might be able to make cool little uh, channel you know like devices and add-ons for printers you know they just lock right in if I can figure this out. So, let's see if we can figure it out. <clears throat> so before I actually extrude that, I'm going to actually I'm going to mirror it and copy it. And we're going to do just because I think it looks a little prettier and it's a little more professional, we're not going to do a fit spline. We're just going to basically clean this up and then mirror it. I don't know why it does that. This is Fusion 360 by the way. I don't know any better. I don't know any different. I I mean, I I just taught myself how to use this, so this is what I use. I, I have a, I use Eagle as well for my PCB design, um, and I need to figure out how to get into uh, 
like how to actually import Eagle files into Fusion because like you can actually simulate chips inside of uh, hardware enclosures and stuff. So that's that's pretty neat. And then like. This is this is pretty simple, <clears throat> and anyway, you know, anyone could could do this for themselves on their own printer, and this would, you know, it's awesome. Oopsie, that was wrong. Okay, what just happened?
So I'm just going to eyeball this. We're just going to go like that. And that's how much we're going to cut off. So basically, I'm going to I'm going to give it a little bit extra because we're printing it out a different out of a different material. Actually, before I cut it, I'm going to chamfer them first. So I think we can do this all in one go. We'll get rid of this sketch to make it more obvious what we're doing here. Whoopsie. Oop. There you go. Okay. Now, we don't only want to do that because, like I said, they, they have those, and it's not going to affect the functionality of it. It might actually make it fit tighter, you know, because once it goes into that groove there, that bevel will actually have, create more friction. So we, we will put that in, not only for strength, but, but for that. Do we want a chamfer or do we want an actual bevel? Because there is a difference. So if we look, let's see if we look at this. Which one is it really? Hmm. It's very hard to tell because it's blue on blue. Hmm. I think it's more of a bevel. So we're, we're going to do a bevel instead. So what's the difference? Like a, a chamfer, it says rolling ball. I haven't you know messed around with it, but basically that's what it is. It, it, it's like you roll the ball along an along an edge, and you know it. it but it simultaneously will kind of like, it doesn't just cut, it also squishes. So it'll, it'll take a, a, a right angle like this. You can see, you'll see on the screen. And it'll take a right angle and it'll actually add. So it's not really, yeah, it's not really cutting anything. It, it, it always adds. I'm wrong. So yeah. You can make it do that. If you have different bodies, so like if two things are, are touching, but they're not the same body, then you can make it work in the opposite direction, basically. That can be annoying. That, that if you're having trouble with that, and you, like, just make sure your bodies are correct. If your bodies aren't joined, then uh, they'll do that. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So I don't use... Oh. Well, I'm using the terms backwards. Okay. So what I'm talking about, and that's funny because I used to weld. But so, like, this is a fillet. And, like, so what I was talking about is a fillet, and I, I just say chamfer all the time, which is stupid. But, all right. So we're going to do a chamfer instead. which is basically a bevel, a true bevel, a flat bevel. See? Like that. Now, one is, that seems pretty significant. I'm going to see what 1.75 1 is. That looks more reasonable. Okay. Am I happy with how much that is? There you go. I mean, that, that's basically it. So, I mean, that, that, that's, that's going to be my first effort. Now, just, just for a sanity check, let's just do a quick dimension here. So that's six. Oh, wrong piece. Yep. Five and a half, six. Might might be a little tighter if it's six rather than five and a half. Again, like I said, I'm a little upset. I think I think I have a little bit of play in this now. But uh time for some new new calipers I can make rusty. <clears throat> See, this is an oddity. This is weird. Why did that happen? What's this? I have no idea why that happened. See that? Look at this. No, oh, look at this. That happened over here too. Okay, so th this this is an extrusion problem here. In that I I cut something. Yeah. Okay, I know what I did. What's this? So I I went too far with that. As far as this one, I don't know what what's going on with this. It looks pretty much the same. It's like a, it's like point post. Uh, although that could be as simple as just you know driving screws into it. If I if I don't want to get too fancy, at least on one of them, and then if I want to add the screw holes where I find it makes the most sense on the other three, you know, try to save as much uh, material as you can in time. Because this uh, PETG, um, just just for your knowledge, uh, I, I printed at 40 millimeters a second on this printer at 252. That's just the degrees that I found, and, and like that seems to work best for all of them. Like I said, the black opaque, like the, the opaque, I haven't gotten other opaques other than black, but the black PETG is it's it stays in the end for a bit, and it, it, I've had the most trouble with it. I don't, I mean, I think that they have to basically dye it to that opaque, you know, it comes, it's naturally, naturally translucent, and then they put the dyes in it, so probably just the dye, it just makes it more, 
volatile, I don't know. Okay. So what is this thing? Corner piece, V2, we're going to go V3, as we do. Okay. And I'm actually going to slice it correctly this time. And we're in good shape, because it's all, it all, I mean, well, these are little overhangs. So, if we print it in this orientation, the thing is, is like something like this, there is no good orientation for. There's no, like, there, there's no way a barb with this many angles on it, I can't really print it in a good way. Um, if I print it in the way that I'm going to, which is straight up and down from this, you know, from this direction, then this is going to be an overhang. Now, I can, if I'm a masochist, I can try to put supports in there, but, it, you know, I think it makes more sense to see how much of a droop I'm going to get. Why don't you rotate it 90 degrees? So these are higher fidelity, and then the only overhang you have would be that. What, this part? Yeah. Well, because then these would droop too. That's what I'm saying, that, that you'd only have a little overhang rather than the entire bar being overhang. Mm. Well, I mean, I think I might be explaining it wrong. I mean, because it's not in the right orientation. I can't get... How can I turn this? There's not a way to turn it, really. Here, let me, let me just show you what I mean. Oh. So, if we tried to print it this way, then, I mean, that clearly, th this, that's even more of an overhang that way. Now, something you can consider, and like what I am trying to take into consideration here is that, well, at first I was, I was afraid that I, I mean, because I, I had the barbs on the wrong plane that, that it was going to be a real problem, but it's not. So, like, th these, are, these are, I think, the best way to print them is straight up and down, because as long as we get this little bit of a barb, you know, it'll droop a little bit, we can clean it up, there might be some stringing, but it'll still, as long as it goes in and then can come back and, and sit on it, then it should be fine. Um, but like, like there, there's no way, I mean, we can try it, like any, any way you, you slice it, that there's no good way. I mean, if we, if we printed it like this, sure, but like, the thing is that all of this would have to be support to, to then support this giant overhang, so they're like, you know, you're shooting yourself in the foot. This is always <laughs> getting this to work. I hate it. Uh, I did learn one thing new, which was crucial. So, little anecdote. Oh boy. Okay, let's just do it. Let's, I'll just show you what it is. So, how did I do it? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, it's over here. Lay flat. There it is. Okay. So once you get it, once you get it close on this, then this is a uh, this is the Creality slicer. So you might not have this software specifically, but and this this slicer can do a lot of things. It, it'll auto generate supports. Okay, and you can choose the, the support density. I mean, with PETG, I've been able to go as low as seven percent infill density or uh, infill for the supports, and uh, it's a. I'll tell you this. It's a nightmare. PETG with supports is a nightmare. It just adheres so well to itself that you're you're. You're cutting it off every time. It's just how it is. That being said, it it really grabs. So then you don't have it. Like if you do do a support, then it won't warp <laughs> because it's grabbing itself so well. Um, but yeah, you can do super low inf infill density on your supports with the PETG. Um, but yeah, so if, if you have an abnormal part, like just a weird part that has a weird flat bottom that isn't really on the normal axis of your drawing planes, then you can do a so if that's the case, then you definitely want to take off your snap rotation. In this case, it doesn't matter. It's a block. But when you do this lay flat, it'll calculate it, and that was easy for it. But it'll, uh, yeah, so it'll lay it flat based on, like, the, the general orientation you have it in at the point, I believe. <clears throat> um, if you turn off the snap rotation, when I was trying to print this, I was trying to be fancy, which was just stupid. It was a totally pointless thing that I did. I, I extruded this at an angle to, like, make this basically higher over here, which had no real point. Um other than making it so that the screw screw threads were less, <laughs> basically. Um, but uh, because of that, and because I just like kind of arbitrarily sliced a bunch off, like the, there was no flat. Like it was it was kind of like the what was the bottom of the piece in the software was now like this. 
and when I dragged it in here, it was like some random like half angle. So if you don't do the snap, ro if you have snap rotation on, which it is by default, and you try to you know rotate it into position, you'll get situations where it'll look completely flat. And if you don't do the preview, you think it was, but if you do the preview, you see that it makes a brim around one little edge that's touching the bed, and then. Uh, you know, and then it's just a nightmare because it's trying to overhang basically the entire piece. So, like, even with the snap, ro with the, even doing the lay flat with the snap rotation on, this simple little piece, just but because it was an arbitrary cut on that side, it would not actually make it flat. So I had to turn the snap rotation off and then lay it flat for it to actually lay flat. It was pretty impressive. So there was no way I could have, with the snap rotation on, even done one degree to get it in the right spot.